Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby? Good morning. As we get closer to the uh, Christmas season, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our subject of the lesson today is called before birth. Uh, this is lesson two, about one a quarter. Today is December 13, 2020. Our subject is called before birth. And yes, we're talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, called before birth. Our lesson scripture and our focus scriptures are the same today. It's Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. And um, this lesson, is had, uh, the focus today is kind of on uh, Joseph, Jesus' earthly father. But it's, the focus is on everything about it. And it, it's so much in it to to detail and um, talk about. So let, we'll, we'll dive right in. And it starts at verse 18, and it talks about the birth of the Messiah. Um, and it talks about how when Joseph initially found out that Mary was pregnant, it goes through that, we're talking about those sequence of events there. So to run it down, Joseph found, he's engaged to be married to Mary, and he finds out that she's pregnant. Well, they're only engaged. They hadn't been married yet, so they had not yet laid together, okay? They had not yet laid together, but yet she's pregnant. So Joseph's initial response, being a righteous man, and, and Joseph, he, he, he wasn't for the foolishness. Because at, at that time, there were a lot of foolish people. And, and Joseph, he had the opportunity to, to shame Mary. Joseph could have openly took her out in public and showed that she, um, she was not a virgin. And she um, was only engaged to him. That could have brought up the fact that she had laid with another man. But we all know that she had not laid with a man. She had been impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Okay? She, the angels had visited her and told her that God had chose her to bear and care for the son of man. The son, the, his only begotten son. The Messiah. The one that would save us from all our sins. Okay? So Joseph, he, Mary tells him that. And, and, but... He's still puzzled and he can't believe that. He, you know, he, it's not fathomed to him. So it's revealed to him in a dream. Joseph had made up his mind that he was going to not shame Mary. He was just going to dismiss her in private. He was, you know, he was going to just do things privately. He was not going to openly shame her. So he had made his mind up to do that. But Joseph, when he fell asleep one night, it was revealed that it was revealed to him through an angel. God revealed to him through an angel that he had impregnated Mary with the, the he had imp, the Holy Spirit had impregnated Mary. He had impregnated Mary through the Holy Spirit to bear and bore the son of man, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. He revealed that to Joseph. So Joseph, after having this dream, he took on that responsibility. It was revealed to him because understand this, you have to understand, we just understood Joseph's earthly perspective, okay? We understood that was Joseph's earthly perspective, what he had to do, what he was going to do through his earthly, through his manly, through his fleshly perspective, okay? But now through his spiritual perspective, understand this. At this time, they knew, the, the, the people of God knew that a Messiah was to come. They knew, they knew through the prophets that a Messiah was on the way, okay? So this was revealed to Joseph by God through an angel in a dream. So that they're clicked to him because they're waiting on the Messiah and God tells him through an angel that this child that is in Mary is the Messiah. Okay? He tells him that. So he's called. He's called before. So before birth, Joseph and Mary both know the child that they are about to be parents to. Before birth, they know this. Okay? So Joseph takes on that responsibility. Okay? Now, 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 let's understand this. Let's get to this. 
realize this. Joseph now is taking on the responsibility of what we call a stepfather. A stepfather. Joseph is now taking on that responsibility. But he did it great. We all know what he did. We all know the, the, the examples he set forth to Jesus. He did it great. I always, he's the greatest example I can think of of a stepfather. Joseph is. He, he, he did that. And now let, let's, let's, let's flip to our time. Let's, let's flip to us when, when, when we as parents, when we as husbands and wives, we as men and women, um, God has blessed us with a child and is doing the pregnancy process, we have to begin then, and even before then possibly, we have to begin then to, to enhance our communication with God. We have to begin to, to focus more so that we are now, and realize that we are now responsible for another life. We are responsible for nurturing a person that God created for a specific reason. Now understand this, it is our responsibility as parents to tune ourselves with God so that we may put that child on the right path so that may, they may do God's will. See, Joseph and Mary knew early on during pregnancy what the will of their son was to be. We have to in tune ourselves early during pregnancy to ask God, thank God, thank you for blessing me with this child. We all, we say, thank God. Some of us want a son, some of us want a daughter, but thank God that he has blessed us with a child. And then begin to say, God, show me the way to be the best parent that this child deserves. Be the parent that you have called me to be for this child. Let me know, let me understand the will that you have for this child. Or oh, please, God, please, if you don't want to reveal it to me directly, reveal to me what I need to do so that this child may carry out their will. We as parents have that responsibility. We have to take care of our children. We have to tune ourselves with God so that we are on one accord, so that we may nurture our children, so that we may implant them the seeds that they are going to need to grow to do God's will. Because understand this. Understand this. We understand this. We are born into a world of sin. We are born into a world of sin. Because sin, it's crazy how, 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 how wrong constantly finds us. A child will do wrong until we teach them right. A child will do wrong until we teach them right. And even when we teach them right, it's amazing how two-year-olds will, will, will know that they're not supposed to be doing something. And you watch them and they're just like this. And before they get ready to do it, they, they look around. To see if anybody is looking. It is our responsibility as parents to take care of our children. To understand what their calling is. How do we do that? We pray daily. We read God's word. We have a relationship with the Father. We have a relationship with him. And understand what it is that he has called us to do. What it is he has called our child to do. Now Jesus was called before birth. Jesus, he was, to, he was to save us from sin, and there were still naysayers. His brothers didn't believe him. His siblings, they did not believe that he was who he said he was because he wasn't doing things the way that he, that they, that they said he should be doing them. Understand this. Not everybody, not everybody will understand God's plan for you. You know why they don't understand God's plan for you? you, you do you understand? Understand this. The reason why, the reason why nobody or few people will understand God's plan for you is it is, it's because it's God's plan for you. It's God's plan for you. See, you are specially, we, each individual, we are specially orchestrated to understand a specific plan that God has for us. And when we realize that plan, we understand it. We get it. There will be many. There will be many that won't get it. And that's okay. 
That's okay that they don't understand. As long as you know and you trust and believe in God that that is the plan that he has for your life, that is his will for you, you are on his path of righteousness, don't worry about what nobody else say. Don't worry about what nobody else do. Because God's plan for you is God's plan for you. He knew of when we were but, but a faint twinkle in our parents' eye. He had something planned for us right then and there. Others won't understand it. Do not, do not, children, adults, do not be discouraged when you're doing God's will and others abandon you and others don't understand what you're doing. People call Jesus crazy. And thousands of years later, thousands of years later, he still reigns as king of kings. He still reigns as lord of lords. He was called before birth, and he still reigns. There have been kings that have came and gone in this earthly world. They are constantly, constantly finding grave sites of ancient pharaohs, of ancient leaders. They're dead. There's a tomb where they lay. But oh, thank God, my Savior, our Savior, who was called before birth, who understood his mission, who would not be deterred by any of the naysayers. After three days, he rose from the dead. There wasn't a spirit that rose. That was his fleshly. That body got up out of the grave. And all power resides in him. All power resides in Jesus Christ. He has all power. Why? Because he was not deterred by the naysayers. His mother and his father believed in him. They trusted God's process. Most of all, Jesus trusted God's process. When you trust God's process in your life, nothing, and I mean nothing, nothing, can defeat you. Nothing can defeat you. We're all called before birth. Tune yourselves with God. Tune yourself with the one, with the one who cannot lie. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Tune yourself and set yourself on one accord with him. Jesus was called before birth. He lived out his mission. Don't get yourself down. If you're up in age a little bit and you think you're not doing God's will or you had not understood or you have not yet grasped what God's plan is for you. Jesus was in his 30s before he began to shine on this earth like no other. God has you. Continue to stay faithful. Continue to trust him. Because like Christ, we were all called before our birth to do something special on this earth. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Have a great day.